Welcome to this video about policy-based authorization in Blazor Server. I will start in the startup class. Here I am going to specify the default sign-in and authentication scheme to be cookies. Then I have to register the cookie or the cookies. Now here in the middleware I am going to call use authentication and use authorization. Authentication so that when a cookie comes in with a request, the uh, uh, user uh, property on the HTTP context can be built and use authorization when we later are going to specify uh, policies that ASP.NET Core's middleware is going to check if they are fulfilled. Because somehow we have to uh, set the cookie here, I have to make the, the controllers discoverable. I'm going to create a new controller. I call it age controller. This controller has one goal. And this is, uh, I'll just call it action result. I call the method set age and it will be accessible uh, over a HTTP post. So this uh, action or yeah, th this controller only has one action and the goal of this action is to create a cookie with the desired age of the user. So I'm going to create a new claim. Now there is no built-in claim types uh, with age, just with date of birth, but this would be a bit more complicated afterwards. So I just call it age. And the value I'm getting from here. So I have to call to string. So I'm going, so yeah, I've created a, a list of claims with this uh, bespoken claim. Now I have to create a claims identity, give it a, a name, create the claims principle, pass its constructor or uh, the, the claims identity in, and then I have to sign the user in, and then do the redirect to the index page. So uh, that's that. Now we are going to the app component here, enclose everything with cascading authentication state so that we can use the authorize uh, view component in here. Uh, I am only going to use the authorize uh, view component and not uh, authorization on a page level. Uh, if I would use authorization on a page level, meaning uh, I use the uh, authorize attribute uh, when I define a razor component, here I would have to uh, substitute it with authorize route you, but because we are not going to do this, uh, it is not necessary. So I'm going to index and here, oh, I am going to create three authorized view components because we are going to have three policies. First policy is called child. If somebody is authorized uh, for this policy, I'm going to greet him or her with uh, your child. Here I call it middle and here elderly. You are middle aged and you are elderly. Let's just thank them. Thank you for the things you have, for the good things, for the, yeah, for the things you have done. So uh, now if we would run the application now, it will, would uh, we would see an exception because ASP.NET Core doesn't know about these three policies. So we first have to define them, to register them, 
Uh, yeah, let's do it. So we are going to the startup file again. Here we are going to add authorization. Now here we can configure it. Uh, you may have seen a video from me or from other YouTubers or other blogs, uh, but whatever. They don't use add authorization, but they still check if the user is authorized. You can do that. If you don't specify authorization, uh, it will just look if the user is authenticated. And if the user is authenticated, he or she is, uh, is always authorized. If we want to have our own policies, we have to configure it in here. So here we can add a policy with the name child. And here we have to specify uh, or to configure this policy again. Now, how can we do that? Because we want to do, we want something with age, uh, we have to uh, define our own requirement, which I call age requirement. This is just a class that is uh, implementing I authorization requirement. Uh, this is has yeah as you see we don't have to uh, implement any properties uh, events uh, whatsoever or methods this is just for uh, for yeah this is just uh, for the things that you will see afterwards uh, in here I define a constructor here we are going to take uh, two ins one is the minimum age. And the other one is the maximum age. As you may guess, the minimum age uh, the user has to fulfill to be in the in the to fulfill the policy. Call it minimum age. So uh, now I am going to create the handler. I call it age handler. It extends authorization handler. And here we pass the age requirement. And that's also why uh, age requirement has to implement AI authorization requirement because here we have the generic uh, constraints that this has to implement the uh, AI authorization requirement as you see here where the generic constraint. Now, uh, here we have to, okay, uh, it's an abstract clause uh, which we have to override uh, one method, a handle requirement async. This method is going to uh, tell if the requirement is uh, fulfilled and if the user is uh, authorized or not. So here we have access to the HTTP context and therefore to the claims. So we can just say has claim. Uh, okay, it's a predicate. C type equals H. So if the user hasn't a claim uh, with type H, we just return and we do this by returning a completed task. Now, if the user has this H, has this, uh, this claim, we have to uh, look uh, what the H is actually. So Context user claims and then its value now uh, in here we are also getting past this age requirement so we can just check if the age is uh, bigger or equal 
the requirement minimum age and the age is uh, smaller or equal the, the maximum age, we say that uh, the requirement is fulfilled. And we do this by calling the succeed method on the authorization handle context. And here we just have to uh, uh, we have to return the task, right? Otherwise, uh, not every we, we get the message. Not every path returns uh, the task here. So uh, now, of course, we have to go to the index and to have give the user here the possibility to change his or her age. We do this here with the form. The method will be post, the action will be age. Uh, we have here an input of type number form control to style it real quick. Here we have to also give the name age and then a button so that the request is getting triggered. Uh, change age here yeah, we have to style oh, yeah no we don't have to but I, I just do it but we have to give it the type of submit otherwise yeah, it won't work with the form now we have to do one last thing and here we haven't uh, configured them uh, yeah we have to configure them now here we have we can say policy requirements at new age requirement pass in the minimum age and the maximum age uh, let's just say 0 and 20 so if uh, a user is 0 to 20 years old uh, he or she will be fulfilling this policy we have to do it for middle and for elderly too middle starting with uh, 21 up until 60 elderly starting 61 up until let's just say 200 uh, yeah and here uh, the reflection like yeah, the framework is, is doing this for us uh, to if we want to go to an endpoint uh, or to a thing that is secured with this authorization, then going to look which authorization uh, authorization handler uh, has this age requirement and then uh, yeah, uh, invoking invoking the, the appropriate uh, handle requirement async method. So uh, let's have a look. Okay, nothing is happening. Uh, why is this? Uh, yeah, I've just seen that here. I have also to register the authorization handler. I register it as a singleton so that we have only one instance for the whole application. Uh, the type is authorization handler and the implementation is the age handler. Okay, so we have the cookie from the app, uh, from the the try uh, that you have done. Uh, okay, seven. I'm still a child. Uh, let's just go to 26. Your middle age. So yeah, uh, yeah. I've shown you how we can uh, register uh, policies in our application in Plato Server. This is all. Uh, done as we would know from a, a normal uh, ASP.NET Core application. Uh, the only thing that is uh, Blazor specific is the 
authorization uh, component, uh, the authorized view component, and then we can just uh, register our policy there. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.